Right now, it is Saturday, April 13th, 2024. And one of my best friends, Omar from Omar Gosh TV, and I have explored a lot of places, including cemeteries. And we went to another cemetery, and this one is one of the most haunted cemeteries I have ever been to. Also in this video is a very, very heartfelt and important message. There's a lot on the line right now and there's a lot of big decisions I gotta make. It's not as good as I thought, but uh, we'll get to that in this video as well. But uh, here's the content. This is one of the most haunted. There's so much history here. Oh, dude, so I'm just- All right, we're leaving. All right, well, that was something. It hurts so bad. I gotta put some- What was that? Right now it is Friday, August 25th, 2023. Usually I've been dealing with some crazy things once a week. All right. But now things are starting to happen more than once a week, which is not what I was expecting. Anyway, On the other side of the state line into Florida, my best friend Omar from Omar Gosh TV and I, okay, something's out here. We went to uh, explore one of the most haunted cemeteries in the state of Florida. Okay. And uh, this is what we caught on camera. Here it is. Yo, that made me nervous, dude. Yeah, I was, I was. I got you back, man. If anything was to go down, I didn't know. I mean, it's like, dang. Yeah. All right, so um, crazy. <laughs> all right, let's say hi. Now I see where we're at. <laughs> I bet you he's driving the Tulsa. No, I wish not. I would have known that we were not here. I would have had on some different clothes. What are y'all doing out here? Looking for some ghosts? Oh, uh, I would, we're just going ghost back. Hunting. I've already I had something half in my in, in my ear. Time, so. Oops, sorry. Ghost sorry. hunting. There you go. Oh, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Never know what's out here, huh? Yeah. What the heck? What's going on here? I haven't been here so long. So there's a lot of history back here. Here we got a toad on one of the on these. Hey, there's a there's a famous actor that's buried here. You want to see his grave? Check yeah, it out. Yeah. Don't step over any um, stones. There used to be lights out here, and there's no more lights anymore. Like, see up there? Oh, dude, something just tugged at my. What the? I felt like something tug at me right now. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Unless you did that. No, I didn't do I didn't do anything. I didn't tug nobody. Wow. But we don't want to be here very long. No. If you look up Brooksville, Florida, this is this is one of the most haunted. There's so much history here, but one of the most haunted places ever. There was and All right, not 100% sure. Omar just got tugged at. Roland, check this out. This is why this place is so haunted, too. One of these old trees, yeah, they used to hang the slaves from. Yeah, oh, geez. And after they would hang the slaves, they would just drop, they'd have like a hole. Yeah, and supposedly there's there's tons of unclaimed like bodies. Whoa. I don't know if that's such a, like uh, not un unclaimed, but yeah. there's so many unmarked bodies like somewhere on the grounds of where they used to hang the slaves. I mean, oh gosh. Like hundreds of slaves, they say. Mm. I mean, you can see how old the trees are. I mean, shine some light. Like that tree's old. They say that at, at dusk, there's a man that you can see like 
kind of just chilling in the tree. Wow. But nothing evil. I mean, I've never experienced anything evil out here. But, you, but I wonder what that whole tug was on your leg. That's weird. Yeah, that was re really weird. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I thought that was like, like it got oh. like knocked over or something. Oh. So, this actor, you can look up online. I'm gonna look at a, it's an actor here that was uh, passed away. <clears throat> here somewhere. Yeah, right here. Michael Talaferro. And he died in 2006. He's in that movie, wow. uh, Bad Boys. Bad Boys. And also the movie Life. Life. With oh. Martin Lawrence. Huh. He was the big man. Wow. Yeah, and he also, like, I think he huh. kind of wrestled with, I think it was, I can't remember. They, it, it's like they, they had a fight or something. Huh. They tried to get him out of the car or rob them, like in huh. Bad Boys. I, I don't remember. I haven't seen Bad Boys in a long time. I did see that mm. new Bad Boys for Life joint, though. That was really cool. He was in a couple other movies too, but oh. yeah, really sad. He was he was oh. actually quite young too. Like life's unpredictable. You just never know when your time's gonna come. You wanna see some creepy dude? Oh yeah. Check out this grave. This is oh, oh boy, here we go. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Now I've brought things here before. There used to be yeah. this really creepy doll that was there a long time ago that would sit in a in a rocking chair and the doll had her eyes closed oh what oh. what is that what's a rose that's just really sad when i mean when somebody has to go that young you know what i mean that's yeah. poor baby Makes never had peace. never had a chance to really live life and get old and everything Yeah, well, that was that was sad seeing seeing that whole memorial there. Wow. Wow. That's sad. But I'm just still still feeling the emotion of just seeing that. You know, just hearing about that poor little child. You know. All right. I'm getting the freak over here. I don't know what the hell that was. It sounded like a little girl whispering. Or a low voice. Yeah. It's like a demon that lives here, and he like haunts this whole place. I went to go see his grave. Which tree is it? Is it this one? Hmm. One of these trees is where they used to do hangings. Oh, and yeah. that's one of, I think, well, is it this one? That's, that's very creepy. The tree just looks so creepy. Oh look, there's more. Wow, this is... Oh, it's cute. Yeah. It's cute. No, it doesn't look good. Again. Oh yeah, no. Did he tell you where we were coming? I didn't know. I didn't know that was gonna be here. <laughs> I would have definitely put my boots on. <laughs> oh. Turned off the entrance. All right. So there's definitely some creepy vibes right around these trees here. That's the trees where somebody was, where people were being hanged, right? Oh, yeah, he was. Oh, yeah, yeah, it just, it just gives me that feeling, you know, like. Hmm? Let's get the 
chills thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. in those woods. <gasps> what the hell's that? I see we uh, get in the car. Oh, shoot. Almost tripped. All right, we're leaving. All right, well, that was something. You know, just walking around out there. What an experience. Dude! Oh, makeup, guys. It looks like a... Looks oh, like right. another nipple. See, I was talking about nipples earlier. It's a nipple right there. Holy Yeah, you're growing crap. a third nipple on your forehead, man. It hurts so bad. I gotta put some hand sanitizer on it. Oh, yeah. Man, that's what it is. There's so many bugs out here, man. I ain't scared of no ghosts. <laughs> no way, Jose. It's funny you mention that. It's <laughs> on my shirt. What is it? Oh, my God. <laughs> I ain't scared of no ghosts. <laughs> Earlier today, before I went swimming at the pool house, Somebody had left a pair of shoes at my front door and I have no idea who or what because when I went to check the footage of my ring camera, there was 15 minutes of time just gone. And I'm like, okay, of all the time for me to want to see what's going on and that time is just like non-existent. So somebody leaves shoes right at my stoop out here don't know why I look all through the house because I'm thinking oh maybe somebody took their shoes off and helped themselves to come in my house so I looked everywhere didn't find anybody so I have no idea why somebody left a pair of shoes you know This is open. fitting in there. What if somebody's walking across out there? I'm gonna have to check outside again.
Stuff is moved around on this table. I swear somebody's been in this freaking house. It's like somebody pulled my blanket and messed up my bed. What the hell? This was nice. This wasn't like that. It's like somebody literally just... Okay. That's not supposed to be like that. All right, now I'm just going in circles. I have no idea. Right, one place I forgot to check is in here. something outside though all right one place that i did not check is up in there but who in the right mind would go up in there would be so hot in there Somebody in this attic. It just felt like something just shocked me. I know there's nothing electrical that's near me that's exposed wires or anything. There's no way. I mean, that's not, there's no way that's doing it because it's not, there's no. What the hell was that? There was just something there, right there. There was something there. 
Right over there. What the hell was that? All right. There was something right back in that corner right there. It had, it just looked like, it's like two green lights, but there's no way, there's nothing, there's nothing electronic here. It, it kind of looked like eyes, like two green eyes light, lighting up. What the hell? Okay, now my light's malfunctioning. Oh, come on. What is, uh, my light? Oh, here we go. Oh, all right, you know what? It just happened again, I'm getting a shock. Why, why am I getting a shock in here? yellowish green and it kind of reminded me of this creature that was in a tunnel that my best friend Omar and I witnessed while we were looking at some footage. I'm going to need about 50,000 likes on this video. I know that's reaching for the stars but I know y'all could do it because y'all are the fam. Okay, this looks like a creepy tunnel that you and I would Oh yeah, I've been there, done that. Look down the hallway a little bit. I'm looking. So what if you're walking and you see this creepy little guy? What, what is, oh, okay, you know. Uh, what is that? First, I would want to know where all the exit points are in that place. You know, before you go in that far, can you get out quick enough? What if the only exit was running past Oh, come on, yeah. All right, well, I, I, you know what? You just go for it, man. You got to run it. You have no choice. You're going to have to just run. You're going to have to run like hell. You have no choice, man. Let me know here in the comments. If you were looking at this creature dead on, straight ahead of you, and the only way out was past him, but where you're at is, you know, there's a wall behind you. What would you do? Would you just stay there? Or would you just run like hell towards this thing and hope to God that it doesn't chase you down? Or maybe you could probably just sit there and do nothing too. That's a possibility. That's an option. I would probably freeze and just be like, kill me. <laughs> just kill me. Yeah, you might do something now, but I ain't gonna say it. I ain't gonna say it. My name. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's already happened. <laughs> yeah. That's why you wear a diaper to a place yeah, like this. Yeah, that's right, man. Or maybe he's friendly. Maybe he's just curious. He's just like checking you out. Well, I don't know. He's looking kind of weird. Yeah, he's looking sus, man. He's just staring. Then he disappeared. It looked pretty similar to that. In my attic. I'm just doing a sweep throughout the whole entire house, just checking every part of the house. I'm going to do it again. Because when I got back from grocery shopping and running some errands, I came here to see something at my front door. Look at that. All right, so this is this is uh, Omar's uh, chickens. I think he stepped into the water bowl there. <laughs> I felt something <laughs> licking my ankle. God, they're so big now. Are they gonna get much bigger than that? What the dogs? Yeah, they'll get they'll like fill in. They'll get fatter. Hey, my phone. They're what? just really liking the dogs. Well, they come over to my hand. If you got some worms. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. funny <laughs> it feels really weird <laughs> excuse me
Oh. Be nice. Hey, hey, cut that out. Hey. Oh. Hey. That's, that's not a rooster. You gonna feed Mona, huh? Hey, Mona. You gotta watch it now. You got it. Mona. She does not see it. <laughs> I am thankful that you've made it to this point and you're giving me the chance to to speak about the things that bring tears to my eyes, things that put me in an emotional state of mind where I don't want to be. And it's a heartbreaking thing that we all deal with. But um, I've lost a lot of things in my life, including people who I care about and sharing this video and other similar videos take me to a place. It's kind of a mixture of emotions. I've lost several people in my life and it, it breaks my heart. People should be able to live the full term of their life and be around for, for as long as you're around, right? I mean, you, you hope that's the way it's going to be. But unfortunately, over the years, I've lost family members who have passed away and I've lost friends who have passed away. Uh, just things happen in life. And I was in a relationship, you know, with this woman, very, very caring, loving person. You know, it's more of a friendship that could have built onto something bigger. And um, I just had plans in my life to settle down and move to the beach, either South Carolina or Georgia or Florida. So I decided Georgia was the place. I figured South Georgia is a good place. And so that's what I did. There was a career opportunity that was lined up for me. There were things that I was hopeful for as far as my future with this woman in my life and, and a career opportunity and buying a home to accommodate someone in my life to bring happiness to someone else so that we can bring happiness to each other like we can complement each other and I figured I had enough bedrooms in case I needed to help someone else out in the family who may need my guidance in a room to stay and when I say that it could be a friend it could be family I'm not trying to be too specific but I try to leave those doors open. And unfortunately, life can just throw you a curveball, and then things just turn in a different direction and they're not as planned. And the career that I walked into, that I, that I specifically moved down here for, besides settling down with someone special, that was a short-lived experience. It was basically a bait and switch kind of job and it ended up turning out to be a nightmare and they wanted me to relocate to a place to do the job over 200 miles away and not even give me a pay increase and then I'm responsible for accommodations if I don't decide to take their allocation for accommodations which covers a hotel room that's shared with another person. And I'm not that kind of person who wants to be in a hotel room with a stranger. I'd rather have my own private room. But if I wanted that, I'd have to pay out of my pocket because that's how they work. And they cut corners and they weren't about doing the job right. They were about getting it done fast. And this was doing electrical work in a construction company. And uh, besides all that, there's a loss. There's a loss of relationships that I've had and connections that are broken. Moving down here was like the icing on the cake. It just got worse and it got worse because things didn't fall into place like I was thinking. I thought I was gonna settle down, have a place for those who I care about to visit or stay as long as they want. I thought I was gonna have, you know, this significant other in my life who was going to settle down here with me and we were gonna grow old together and do walks together, ride bikes together, go on the beaches, you know, the sandy beaches and walk the beaches together. The things that I had thought were gonna happen, 
this was supposed to be my final resting place, my final home. This is supposed to be my last place that I was going to move into. And it was like everything was happening all at once. In the way it happened, it was just hard for me to back out, especially since the job opportunity was there. It was confirmed. I couldn't predict the future on how it was going to happen after I had already had purchased a home here and settled down and changed my driver's licenses and all these things. Like All these things happened, and then I got stuck into this. And then I didn't realize things were going to get complicated when it comes to my health and my health anxieties and the uncertainties. And I've been spending most of my time going to the cancer specialist, getting CT scans and blood work and, and more testing. And they were going to do a biopsy and then they decided to do CT scans, be less invasive. And then it's going to the cardiologist because there was a heart attack that happened. And I, and I, you know, I deny these things to myself. Like uh, I didn't have a heart attack. That was heartburn or I don't realize these things are happening to me. And then I find out the hard way when I go to the cardiologist and then I get a scare. They kind of scare the hell out of you. And with all the things that have been happening, living alone, losing loved ones in my family, losing friends, I feel like there has to be some kind of virtual escape through YouTube because that helps me cope with my loneliness, my anxieties, especially my health anxieties, and just feeling so down and feeling like I failed. I failed my friends, I failed my family, I failed everybody. Like I, I feel like I disappointed a lot of people and it just breaks my heart that I've come to this point in my life where I thought things were gonna finally settle down and I was finally gonna be with someone special and, and experience this beautiful part of the country together and then have people who I care about come visit me and, and experience that with me. Because you cannot predict where people are going to move once they settle down in their lives. You know, you have someone who might want to move across the country. And so do you stay in the town that you've been in for many years to develop relationships with people? There was one place that I stayed for about 30 years, right? Developed relationships, friendships, been around family, and then I move way down here to Georgia. And it's not like I'm on another planet. I'm still on the same planet, but it just feels like those miles between me and those people I left behind have increased significantly over the last year and a half or so, but I'm still in the same place. But the distance seems much greater than it was when I first moved, as time has made that distance even further. So it's, it's very saddening and, and heartbreaking. And so I feel like uploading this YouTube content, and I, and I know it seems repetitive, but it's taking me back in time to a part of my life where I wasn't alone, where I wasn't sad, where I was enjoying my life and the things around me were positive and I didn't have those health anxieties like I have now. I mean, I've had some health anxieties and I've done things to be in the best health that I can. Working out, eating the right foods, that put me in the right direction. So those health anxieties were minimal. They weren't consuming my everyday life. They weren't overwhelming like they are now. And they were much worse a couple months ago. It's a combination of loneliness and feeling like that I'm being discriminated against when it comes to employment because of my age. I try to find something rewarding to do to provide some kind of service to the community, whether it's me doing electrical work or technical work or even helping out in the community doing yard work, whatever it may be. I, I wanna be able to do those things, but whenever it comes to something that involves physical labor, that makes me feel good about getting my exercise, those jobs are being offered to people that are much younger, in their 20s, 30s, maybe 40s, like early 40s. But once you mention you're in your 50s, they either don't want you to work or they'll give you a different kind of job that's sedentary where you sit at a desk and that's not me. I can't do that. For, I cannot put my health into that. I've already was down that road and my blood pressure jumped up ex significantly higher to the point where I was on the borderline of having a stroke. There were symptoms that were happening. That's how bad it was. And when I went to the cardiologist, they were like, now I got more tests to go do. I had a Holter monitor test and there's other tests they're gonna do. Now they're gonna do an echocardiogram, then another one. So I am, I'm all over the place. And that's why you're seeing 
this video. I'm trying to break the cycle, but there's a part of it that brings me back virtually into time to a better state of mind that I was in doing well. And I revert back to that time and I've recreated some of that for now because I'm trying to take myself, like I said, back in time mentally to that point in my life where I wasn't alone and where things were working out. And I actually had this woman in my life and the relationship was still strong. And, and we were in that point of our lives where we had plans. Things were just, seemed like they were set in stone for the future, like this is what's gonna happen, but we have to wait, process out. We have to, you know, let the time go by. And then when the timing's right, this happens. And so I travel back in time mentally through YouTube vicariously. So I'm living through myself vicariously. I'm seeing that at the part of my, the time of my life where I was happy, where there was excitement because of being around people who just made me happy and then sharing that excitement with other people. It's an amazing experience. So I'm trying to connect to as many people who have subscribed over the years. And I feel like it's hard to connect with everybody if I am just going on my nature walks or if I'm cooking something and sharing a cooking video because everybody came for the paranormal and so I figured that's what everybody wanted and I was the kind of person who was trying to make everybody happy you know I like to see people happy just like when I would go somewhere and somebody would say hey I, I love your videos and then they would smile and they would like be so happy and want a picture and you know that made me happy seeing them happy so I'll make a video that I might not be happy about making that might be stressful making like sitting down editing for 20 hours, 30 hours to make a 30, 40 minute video. It's not fun, but I do it for you. It's a sacrifice that I make as a YouTube content creator. But the thing that breaks my heart about that is when I put 30, 40 hours into editing, such as going on a road trip, it's not just the editing, it's the traveling, it's the driving, it's the time I put aside to to go places because there's times where I go on road trips just to make YouTube content just specifically for that because it may be a specific place of interest that I go to that I feel would be good for content and then there's places I go because I want to go for myself and so the trip may have two reasons or several different reasons more than two so I guess it 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 breaks my heart that people have lost touch with wholesome family vacation type content. So like if I go on vacation by myself, you know, or I go somewhere, I feel like it's not getting the love that it used to get. And it seemed like everybody enjoyed me being at resorts. Like I remember the days of feeling the excitement of the summer and the beautiful weather and being at these vacation resorts. And those videos used to do really well years ago. It seemed like videos of me on vacation and you know, just doing these fun adventures. It just seemed like they were doing well in the past, especially the beach and all that excitement. It's like when I do that now, nobody wants to watch. But if you go back in time, it's like everybody enjoyed it. Then everybody's like, ah, oh, we don't want to see the world around you. We don't want to see the beautiful beaches and the crystal clear water that's sparkling blue. And, you know, just the excitement, you know, it's like, all they wanted was the drama. And I felt like I was pushed in that direction to where I had to do that because if I were to share a moment that made me feel happy and, and I, it was something that was enjoyable and I uploaded on YouTube, it was like, it had lack of interest. It was like, nobody really wanted to see that. So it's, it's a very emotional thing for me because there was a time in my life where things were doing much better. I was much happier. I felt fulfilled and YouTube was so fun and exciting. and The engagement was incredible and it was alive. I feel like I'm failing everybody, but the only thing that I feel is different is time in itself. I wish I knew the answers to this. The other thing that breaks my heart is 17 years 17 years is what I put into YouTube content creation. That's a lot of time. There was times where I felt like walking away from it. I feel like it's hard to let go of YouTube now. And when I see it falling apart, it makes me want to cry. And I've cried because of this and it hurts. It's, an, it's sad. I'm actually seeing a therapist over this because this has been very depressing and I've been dealing with the anxiety. So I am seeking help on that and I do positive things. I, I go for my walks. I try to get my 20K steps every day. I'm doing things active, uh, you know, in the community as far as just going to these places and staying 
active. That's the biggest thing in eating healthy. You know, I could just go in a corner somewhere feeling bad about my whole life and feeling alone and just feeling sorry for myself, but I can't do that because I don't want to be that person who just deteriorates and evaporates into nothing. My mental health is way too important. My physical health is way too important. I have too much to live for to just let it all fall apart and me starve myself because I can't, you know, eat because of feeling sad and anxiety. That's why I'm proactive and focusing on staying healthy and focusing on my mental health. And I'm talking to a counselor, you know, a therapist, like, and I have a friend who is just like a therapist. So that just even helps even more having that advice. But the problem is the difference between someone who does it for a profession and a friend is a friend could be more personal. And they might tell you what you want to hear, but someone in the profession is going to probably be more logical and bring the truth to you. And so it may be a whole different conversation, but, uh, it's all about feelings and emotions and sadness and losing loved ones and how, how you cope with that and whether or not you can hold a job and whether or not, I mean, there's so many different things. I'm not a lazy person. The problem is I have too much energy and I can't sit down for a office job. I can't sit down for a desk job. I can't be on the phone just calling people. I can't just sit. I have to be physically active. As much as I would like to work where I can sit and use my brain power and do things that can help a company grow. I want to be physical. I need to be physically active for my physical health. And without that, I feel like it compromises my mental health because then I have anxiety about not getting enough exercise. And then I start over getting overwhelmed by looking at the blood pressure readings and seeing things going in the wrong direction. And then these scares with the doctors and, and all that. And my cancer anxieties, you know, these are things that are overwhelming. So that's why you're seeing this video, because this is my virtual escape to take me back into a time where I didn't have all these issues, these worries, these things that are weighing me down. You know, I've had the health anxieties, like I said, but not to this extreme. I think my health anxieties peaked about four or five months ago. And then they started to dwindle down because there were some reassurances after some recent visits with the cancer specialists and some CT scans that come back saying things are looking better than they were initially. So if things don't progress worse when it comes to your lymph nodes and things going on in your body when you get scans done, that's a good sign. If things stabilize, that's a good sign. So now I just got to get past this whole cardiology thing and hopefully this is going to be fine. That's where I stand right now. I know this is a long dragged out video, but deep down I, I am sad and I have anxieties and I'm doing what I can to, to deal with that. I wish my friends would be there for me more than they are. I, I feel like they, they have too many things going on in their lives and they just don't have time for me or maybe my problems are just too much for them to handle because they got enough problems of their own. And sometimes friends only want you around when they have nothing else to do. And unfortunately, that's kind of how things work out or if they need you for something. But whenever you have a problem, it's sometimes I feel like they don't have time for you. Or, you know, I have friends who live too far away as well, unfortunately. Even though I moved down here, I didn't move closer to some friends, but still not close enough. And then I've moved away from some friends. But they've came and visit over the years, you know, over almost two years now. They, they came to visit a couple times. There's a big disconnect with a lot of people in my life since moving down here. And I wish there was a way to reconnect, but I can't keep trying. So I, I actually gave up on it because I felt like it was doing more harm to me emotionally by trying than it was if I just let it go. Plus, you know, I have so many things that I'm worried about right now with my health, even though I know things are looking better. I do have issues with my heart and that's scary because, you know, you can just like that, you could be gone because of a heart attack or a stroke. So I'm dealing with that right now. And it's something that's hereditary. I could tell you that much. That's where I stand. Financial struggles. I'm barely holding on right now. Don't have enough money to pay the bills, unfortunately. So I'm tapped and tapping into my savings a lot. And I'm not here to cry about finances, but I'm just trying to be transparent. And it seems like whenever I'm transparent, sometimes people take it as I'm just whining and want people to feel sorry for me. But can't we just agree that I'm just being transparent? Is there no option to be transparent here? That's kind of where I'm going. So my next thing is having to move out of here between the expenses of keeping this house, the taxes, all the things involved, insurance, utilities. I mean, I don't have to worry about electric. I got the solar, but the water bill is 
is, is up there for some reason. I don't know why it's so high. It's much cheaper where I lived before. The internet gets expensive. Got to pay HOA fees and <laughs> they just went up. Homeowners insurance went up. Car insurance doubled. I'm like, you know, it's, it's insane. I'm like, why am I still here? Like, I'm gonna have nothing left of my retirement, nothing left of my savings if I keep staying here. It's not easy trusting anybody after what I've been through in relationships and friendships and just dealing with people in life in general. The scammers out there, the gold diggers, the people that are, are wanting you in their life for the wrong reasons. I've been taken advantage of. I've been too generous over the years. And my generosity put me in the poorhouse, basically. You know, yeah, you can have a nice house, but when you don't have money to keep up with things, that's when things get complicated. If I don't sell this house before I run out of my savings and my retirement, if I cannot pay all the bills and make my payments here and there, including credit card payments, if I don't make any of those, my credit's going to get destroyed. If I don't pay the bills, foreclosures happen. Then I have nothing left. I got to get ahead of that. That's why I was looking for jobs. Let me just go on Indeed and search some jobs and let me just see if I can find something that will not discriminate against my age. Because I feel like I need to do something to keep me from feeling lonely. And, and working for somebody keeps me working with people. But sitting at a desk is not what I was signing up for. But apparently one company bait switched me. Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, I got a lot of, you know, I can do this and engage with people and getting physical exercise. I'm installing cables and wires and in hardware and doing you know, technical work, this is fun. And then all of a sudden, after a while, I'm pushed to desk duty. What, what is it? That they hired somebody younger now because they want someone to run around and do all these things. The problem is I'm about quality work. I, I take my time doing work because I want it done right and I get it done thoroughly. So it seems like these companies nowadays, they just want someone to get stuff done fast, regardless of whether or not quality is compromised. And so maybe they're not happy with the speed of the work that I do, but they should be happy for the quality of the work that I do. So they hire someone younger, thinking they're gonna be faster. I'm 52, but I still run fast. I mean, super fast, faster than people that are in their 20s. And this is no exaggeration. I am a fast runner. I'm, I'm fast at a lot of things. But when you become, when you do stuff too fast, when it comes to the technical stuff, you may skip on the quality or the finer details. And that's not me. So now I can see, put the guy on desk duty. He's not getting the, the work done fast enough. We don't care about the quality of work. We just want the, the, the quantity of work. And this is what's aggravating. But that's where I stand. Everything else is failing in my life. I cannot find jobs that want to hire me because they're looking for people who are much younger. And they also don't like hiring someone who doesn't have much consistent long-term experience. Because even if you run your own business and you have the same business for over 20 years, they look at it as, okay, you're unemployed. It's kind of how they see it. They don't see you working for a company that's on the map, that's something that's a big company. They don't see consistency. They don't see someone staying at a certain company for a long time. They might see me here for a year or two and there and for a year, five months here, a few months there. They don't see the longevity in a company. Unfortunately, that's how it is. When you're self-employed, sole proprietor, you're running your own business and you've been doing the same line of work for 20 years, it's like, they look at it like, oh, well, yeah, well, that's not really any proof of employment. We don't, how can we get any kind of references from that if you're running your own business? Because you can just, who's going to be your reference for that business? You know, as far as punctuality, uh, all that, you know what I mean? So that's the problem. Anyway, uh, I got to go. We got a crazy storm coming and uh, who knows what's going to happen. But I need to make sure I'm ready for it. I mean, I do have my backup power batteries and solar panels. So if power goes out, I'm ready. But... I might have to stock up with some extra food before it gets bad. But uh, take care and be safe, everybody.